Welcome back everybody. So I've been working on Reva for about a little over two weeks now, going on three weeks actually. Um, did that water pump swap out. Uh, I got a video made up. I just got to drop it. And after that, I changed the oil and the oil filter and the spark plugs. I ran a compression check. Everything was good there. Fired it back up. The next day we drove it to town and back and I noticed a, a clatter coming from the front end. And uh, got it back in the garage or in the barn here and uh, pulled that uh, right front valve cover off and lo and behold i had a bent push rod just kind of out of the blue um, did a whole bunch of troubleshooting over the past week can't seem to figure it out uh, why it happened uh, if anybody has any any clues on what could specifically cause that um, obvi the, the obvious stuff like stuck valves that doesn't seem to be the cause a wiped uh, camshaft maybe but I checked the, the, the lobe height just using the push rod and all that seems okay. So I'm still a bit confused. One of the things I've learned over the years having unique vehicles is ordering parts is always a huge pain in the butt. And this thing is uh, no exception. As a matter of fact, it's probably the worst one I've ever had because you know, from here forward, it's an F-350. From here back, it's a Bronco. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the front axle. Uh, I think it's stock. Um, but uh, I, I even went to the Ford dealership and brought them the VIN number because I wanted to get the uh, you know manufacturer options list that comes with a vehicle you know what they would have shipped it with the VIN number comes back as unknown so I'm kind of just guessing as I go uh, and that's one of the things about vehicles like this is you have to learn all of the intricacies of your vehicle you know, the axles, the engine, the transmission, the wiring, the this and that, you know, the engine block itself in this is an earlier block than an 88. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the block isn't or wasn't from 88, but the, according to the stamp on the block, D9TE, I think is what it said. Uh, that's from 79 to 86, I think. So when I'm ordering engine parts like the water pump, I order it for an 86 F350 460. Uh, I don't know for sure. The block could have been a leftover block that they just used for this build, but we do know for a fact that this would have come with EFI. All of the wires are zip tied off and it's a, now a carbureted 460. So that's another you know, intricacy that you have to know about. And I do know for a fact now that this engine has been rebuilt. Uh, when I was troubleshooting the push rod issue, I stuck a boroscope, which <clears throat> is pretty cheap, honestly. Uh, endoscope, boroscope, whatever you want to call it. This one is Endage, I think is the brand. Come on. And uh, it's off of Amazon for like 40 bucks, maybe something like that. Anyway, I stuck it in the, the spark plug holes, checked out the valves and the pistons and everything looked good in there and on the top of the pistons they're stamped 0 0.040 so that means it's bored 40 over um, that's fairly reasonable um, I, 60 is usually as much as you want to go but who knows uh, i'm not a 460 guy i don't know those in, inside now i'm learning as i go but because it's been rebuilt the internals are not the same so a stock 460 the push rod length is 8.55 inches and of course, nobody in town even had them. I had to go, you know, 40 minutes away to a, a hub, an AutoZone hub that happened to have a couple. And I brought a couple of the push rods out of this just to match them up. And the 855s are too short. So now they're just a smidge too short. So I had to call around for the next size up. They're sold in, I think, 60 thou increments. And I measured the, the ones that are in it. And the ones that are in it are like 8.6-ish. Um, so the net, that's 8.616 or something like that. I, I'm not even 100% sure, but the next size up, I was able to uh, source locally in town here. It took a couple days to get them. I got three new push rods and a new rocker arm. Installed all of that, and I did another full oil change. I actually drained the oil uh, because when I was turning the engine over, just uh, not manually, but with a, a, a switch, uh, just to watch the rocker arms and push rods and everything move and measure the rise of the rocker arms. Um, I saw what looked like metal flakes flowing out of the, the push rods. So I was a little worried, actually really worried. I'm still really worried, but the oil that I drained out of the thing, I strained through a white rag and then the oil filter, I split it wide open, checked all the pleating 
and I didn't see anything. So that gives me a little confidence. And now that it's all back together with the new push rod and rocker arm, there's no more clatter. I've fired it up and it seems to run just fine. So I, if anybody's got any ideas or thoughts on that, I'd love to hear it because I'm kind of you know, mystified right now. I did have this little part come out of the oil when I drained it. This little guy here, it's a little uh, plastic clip. When I popped the oil plug, that fell out. And I honestly have no clue. I mean, to me, it looks like a little uh, electric connector plug end piece or something. Uh, I don't know. That fell out. But there was really nothing else in the oil. So I'm happy, but nervous all at the same time. So the engine part, as far as I'm concerned right now, is good. I'll give you a quick look here at the engine compartment. So our new water pump, everything's looking good there. Now I keep seeing a little bit of wetness right on that water pump or the uh, water neck. Now it's not actively leaking, but there's definitely a wet spot and I've wiped it down. It keeps coming back, which really kind of surprises me. But either way, the rest of everything down here looks good. I cleaned up the valve covers and put new gaskets on there and uh, got my new distributor cap and rotor assembly. All that looks good. I loosened up the uh, the throttle spring just because it was really really tight on the foot. I got a new choke cable on there installed and man it, it actually works now. The old choke cable is just way too flimsy. I mean it was it'd be too flimsy for a lawnmower you know let alone a 460. Uh, got a new battery terminal on here which I think I showed in the other video. Everything else is looking pretty good. Um, figured out my wiring issue uh, for the lights and that's that's going to be a whole episode in its own the the wiring in this thing is so screwed up and just beat down there's that wad of wires right there virtually every wire coming out of that connector right there there's no um, sheathing on the wire itself right here so i took some liquid it's called liquid electrical tape and I just and I spread all the wires apart and I just wiped that stuff on there as best I could but like this one right here is just bare wire for the first inch coming out let's see if yeah that one right there anyway uh, lots and lots of weird shit going on with the wiring but I'll, I'll do a full separate video of that we'll get to the inside here in just a moment but uh, I ordered a whole set of gaskets weather stripping from Bronco Graveyard and it just came in yesterday. I'm already starting on it. Literally every seal on here. So the doors, we've got inside and outside window wipers or wipes, seals, whatever you want to call them. The seal that goes up and around here, that's called the run. So I've got new inside and out for all four doors. This seal, this seal, again, all four doors. So you can see how flattened out these are, just completely crushed. Like there's nothing left there sticking out. I'm sure it still seals okay for now, but we got new ones all the way around. Every one of these wipes right here is completely cracked. Focus. Completely cracked. They're, they're not flexible at all. If I bend this, it'll simply break. Yep. So I've got all new ones all the way around. I've already started tearing apart uh, that side for a wiring issue which you can see right here, they, they did a temporary fix and that's for the power door locks. And then there's, there's two sets of wires, one for the power, power door locks and one for this light. That's what these two wires are for, or two sets of wires. And the passenger side rear door, they were both broke uh, inside here. So I put two new ones in, rewired the whole thing and uh, I happen to have some color matched wire, so that worked out really well. Same thing with the pink wires for the, uh, I think it's the door lock. Yeah, the door lock. And since I've already got this door panel off, I'm already working on these seals and wipes, and you can see how bad they are. Just completely shot. Anytime you move them at all, there's no flex. It'll just break and crack. These new ones are fantastic. Again, Jeff's Bronco Graveyard. Um, cost 
about a little over 600 bucks or like 630 i think or 610 for all of my seal kits and again this is where it's two different vehicles so i had to order the seal kit for an f-350 for the front side the topper obviously a bronco topper seal kit the tailgate is a bronco seal kit so i got new wiper here and the run uh, up and along here uh, this guy, I didn't get this, but I'm not too worried about that. And as I go, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, vacuum out the insides here. And any, anytime I find something like this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wire wheel it down, get it down to bare metal, uh, probably throw some self-etching paint on it or primer, maybe a small coat of paint. And then uh, I'm going to use some of that um, surface shield and kind of coat the insides, you know, coat down in here, coat down in the bottom of the, the door. Uh, just to help protect it got a little bit of surface rust right here still overall the thing is in incredible condition being a 1988 especially here in northern michigan and also since i've already got to pull all of the trim around the doors you know all the way around i'm going to do something about this headliner which is hanging it out i know it's hard to see on the camera but it's hanging down quite a bit. So since I already have to pull everything and the topper is going to be coming off, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I have to do for this and uh, see if I can't get that handled. I got a, got our new uh, rear view mirror on there, which I sourced from a, an old F-250. Worked just fine. So I'll show bits and pieces of putting this door stuff together, but I know that there's a lot of videos out there on replacing door and window seals. So I'm not too awfully worried about that. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see about this truck, you know, throw it down in the comments. I'll make a video of it or mention it in the next video, whatever it is. Lots of unique stuff going on here that I've literally got to learn as I go. Now, fortunately I've had a Bronco and Fords for literally my whole life. So I'm very familiar with how most of this stuff works. Um, I'm wondering, you know, like one of the things I want to get eventually, especially living up north, is a defrost on my rear rear glass. And fortunately, I have a whole Rubbermaid tote of Bronco parts. And this, like this one here, already has the switches, the rear glass switch and the defrost switch. So I'm gonna see if I can't either run the wiring or find a, a rear glass that has the defrost in it. You know, little things like that, that over the next, few months to a year I'd like to get taken care of but the big issues right now the door I, I need to get it sealed up and prepped for winter I mean we got maybe a month and a half till snow like usually our first snow is around Halloween and right now it is the 21st of September so five six weeks till I could till we could be seeing snow and I want to get the under coating on it so I'm gonna have to get under there and clean up all of the surface rust then spray it, but I need to get the top half sealed up so it can at least be outside because this thing is huge. It takes up a huge chunk of real estate here in the barn. All right, time to get to work. All right, gonna get a, a quick uh, before. Got a little bit of rust right here on this pinch seam. A little bit down in the track here. That little spot up in there. It's not terrible. It's not great, but the uh, inside of the door i vacuumed out that whole valley down there got all the crud out of there i know i can't really see it all for the rest of the seam doesn't look too bad one little spot up here again not terrible but we'll clean that up and that's about it and i'm going to be doing this to every one of these doors and uh, we'll, get a, uh, we'll get an after when we're done. All right, so I figured it'd be easier to just go ahead and yank all the trim off of everything to uh, do my door jams and all these seals and the cleanup effort I'm doing. This headliner, holy crap, it's in terrible shape. And of course, this is not something that is made. There's no replacements. So I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna go about repairing this. Uh, I might just have to stick it back in there got this weird asbestos looking crap uh, half of it stuck to the headliner half of it's still stuck to the ceiling in there I started working on the uh, the door here and uh, 
you know, I made some good progress. I got most of the rust cleaned up and uh, I'm not too awfully worried about the paint and all that. I'm just trying to stop it from rusting more. I kind of did the same thing all the way around. All Everything inside of right here is going to be covered anyway. So honestly, I don't really care about the paint. Um, inside the door, I'm probably going to squirt with um, Surface Shield. I'll get to that when I get to it, but I just started working on this and I have all the tools and everything out and I figured it'd just be easier to do all of them at one time. And uh, you can see here how this is modded at Centurion. It's got uh, all these panels put in. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So these are the panels, I'm assuming anyway, that are added from the, the company Centurion. You can see where they would have chopped it right there off the crew cab and then, you know, put together the Bronco top right here. And uh, it's got the same thing over here on this side. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, everything else is looking pretty good. I've only found one spot that is really bad as far as uh, rust goes. Let's get this out of the way. And let's see, scoot that out of the way. Scoot that back. And there's actually, it's even still a little bit wet down here. If I pull this back even further, you can see a hole right there going straight through. And uh, I'm not sure how bad the damage is. This is a, I'm assuming it's a wheel well for the spare tire that used to be mounted right here uh, on this bracket. All right, everybody. So uh, it's been another day. Uh, I got the headliner. I think I showed you all that yesterday. Um, it was pretty warped. So this morning I got a, a, a long sheet of aluminum, like less than eighth inch aluminum. And I took a couple bar clamps and put a, a bend in it lengthwise as a profile. And I put the cardboard or I put the, uh, the liner on it and then uh, I spritzed it with water, got it damp, not wet, but damp. And then I took some old uh, bed railings. I, I use them as angle iron all the time and laid those on it out in the sun and it dried up really quick. The shape is, eh, yeah, I'm not super happy with it. Uh, but now I'm gonna take some fiberglass. I bought a, a big mat of fiberglass and I'm gonna lay it over the whole thing, cut out the, the, the light or the light holes, um, cut out the, the holes for the, the sun visors and the clips and I'm gonna wet it down and hopefully that will weight it down and make it smooth again, ish. Just so you can see the aluminum up underneath. I got two bar clamps and uh, got a, a pretty decent little profile to it as far as the arc. As you can see, the top of this headliner is nowhere near that. It's kind of wrinkly, but uh, I think once this gets wet down with the fiberglass and laid down, once it's put back into the roof and screwed in the way it, the way it was, it had one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, seven, eight, nine, something like that, uh, screws holding it to the roof. Um, I think it'll be close enough. Um, the actual fabric up here, well, you can't see it because of the aluminum, but the actual fabric is still sticking pretty good for the most part. I mean, it's drooping in a couple little spots. You can see it by the light hole there, and I might just spritz that with some uh, spray-on adhesive. Now on this driver's side door jam area, they had a couple clips in here. Got a couple holes right here. There was a clip there. Actually, I think I got them sitting up here. Yeah, these clips, which are probably for a jack, maybe, or maybe a flashlight clip at some point. I don't know. But uh, those screws were all gooned up and quite a bit of rust. I, I started chipping away at the rust and a hole went right through. So I just cut that out, cleaned it up. I'm going to weld in a small chunk of steel here. The rest of this, though, I think is going to be just fine with a little bit of wire wheel and then some uh, either navel jelly, you know, uh, convert, rust converter, or just if I wire wheel it some more. Because right now it's just scraped with a screwdriver. Bottom of the door, it's not too bad. Got a little bit right here, just a little bit of surface stuff. And uh, that's that's not that bad. This back door didn't have hardly anything. Well, here we go, everybody. I got the, uh, the matting all cut out and laid out the way I want it. 
unfortunately right now there isn't much of a breeze i kind of wish this was in the shade but and uh, i'm not looking to make this rock hard like the side of a, a boat i'm just looking to stiffen it up a little bit I know nobody's gonna want to sit and watch this for the next hour, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera down and uh, mix up a new batch. Keep going. All right. Well, got all the uh, fiberglass on here. It's all worked in pretty good. Cutouts, everything lined up. But I think what I'm gonna do is cover this with plastic. Very wrinkly plastic, that way it still gets a little bit of airflow under it. And then take my bed rails, lay them back on here to hold it a little bit flat. And if the plastic doesn't come off, I'm just not worried about it. I'm hoping that the weight of this will help compress it and form it to the sheet metal that's under it while still giving it a little bit of airflow. And as you can see, it's, it's already somewhat dry. That did not work very good. I'm just hoping this isn't quite a bit of flatness. <laughs> but that's definitely helping flatten it out. Okay. We'll see what happens. Well, folks, uh, it's been like two hours. They called for possible rain shower this afternoon. Uh, I put that plastic down like you saw, and uh, I ended up clipping it on the edges to keep the plastic in place. It's mostly dry under here it's getting hard but holy crap and and this rain right now is light about 10 minutes ago it was fierce downpour i had to put all these weights and steel plates and everything on all the four corners of this little pop-up and it was still flying around just how it works sometimes yep she's leaning such is life Look at this. We got rivers rolling out there. All right, we're back. I figured I'd give a quick update. I've been laying out all the pieces, but the headliner I showed you before looked pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it now. I'm pretty sure once it's installed, it'll be just fine. This section right here, kind of near the front, right here was you know the fabric was separating from the backer and uh, i peeled it up a little bit extra from both this cutout and from the front and then i sprayed some contact adhesive in there and you know hopefully that'll help that stick the rest of it i am really really happy with it's not gorgeous by any means uh, but it's held up with these screw screws right here and then on the front seam and on the back seam and obviously on the edges. So I, I honestly, I think that's gonna hold just fine. And even this back light holds it up. The front light just hangs in there. So yeah, we'll see. Now for the truck itself, yeah, we hit another auction. This'll be another video here in a couple days, maybe a week, I don't know, <laughs> at the rate things are going. Anyway, we got all four doors now, um, completely peeled apart, completely wiped down. I did a full clean all the way around. The door jams, I fixed all of the surface rust 
uh, you know, just a wire wheel and then either, you know, navel jelly or Rust-Oleum, something or other, something to stop it, cleaned it all up. Um, and then I took the, uh, what's that, uh, the surface shield and I sprayed a layer of surface shield in that run there. And then I sprayed the inside, you know, basically the whole bottom of every door cavity got sprayed with surface shield. So again, it's like all these little rust spots right here, wire wheel it down through some navel jelly on there. Same thing over here. And uh, it's looking really, really good. I've got the back two doors, the sweeps are in and the runs are in. And uh, I'm working on the front right now. All of the wiring is now fixed uh, for, for the uh, doors. So all these wires, I put new con uh, connectors so I can just take them apart, put them back together uh, on all the doors. The stereo, I finally got it completely figured out. There was a wire down here. Let's see how good this camera really is. This wire right here, this is where it went through the firewall into the cab and you can, let's see here. Yep. Yeah. You can see it's gone. And when it did that, it completely fried the other inline fuse. So this one right here was completely fried. I cut it off and uh, just hot wired it straight to the battery and got the amps to fire up. And then I had one of the, they're called RCA adapters. I'm not a huge um, audio guy, but this one right here, that's what was installed. One for front, one for back. Channels one, two, and then three and four was on another one. It was fried, so I picked up this guy from O'Reilly's just uh, yesterday, installed it, and uh, the speaker wiring at the amp itself was goofy, but I got that figured out as well. And uh, let's see if we can see through here. Yep, there we go. So got all the speakers, you know, properly wired now to where, you know, when you take the radio and you go front right, just the front right comes on. Same thing, back right, back left, front left. All of them are working. Even the tweeters are working. So super happy about that. The, uh, the sub works. All of that works now. I actually haven't checked to see if that DVD, or I'm sorry, a CD player works that looks just like what used to be in the back of our Grand Cherokee I uh, got these uh, mats for the front you know I was looking at WeatherTech and WeatherTech doesn't actually make a set for this vehicle nobody makes a set for this vehicle but uh, apparently these Husky liners are good for uh, was it 81 to 96 F series blah 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 and Broncos so has this uh, cut out here for the four wheel drive shift lever. So I'll be cutting this out. We're getting there little by little, day by day. It is definitely a monster project. I bit off a little bit more than I had planned. However, since I got it all apart and I'm fixing all this stuff, I don't wanna have to do it again. So I'm just cleaning up everything as I go, making it to where I shouldn't have to touch it for years and years and years. All right, so real quick update here. I got this uh, Dura liner made by Duramat and uh, put it up about an hour ago. It seems like it's holding pretty good by itself. Um, it's a pretty, pretty thick material here. I got some chunks out here, I'll show you. Got the doors done, uh, the front doors anyway, and I got it so into it, I forgot to take some video of the plastic liner I put in there. But basically I took some of this uh, stuff called Duraskrim, S-K-R-I-M, Duraskrim. This stuff right here, it's for uh, uh, greenhouses and uh, it's really strong. It's got the fiber reinforcement in it. And I just took some double-sided tape and put it on the inside of the door panel, you know, after we cleaned off all the other crap, see all that crap, peeled all that off and uh, just put some double-sided tape this stuff here, some duck brand, whatever. I actually cut that in half, but I put strips, put that piece up there and then trimmed it to fit and then trimmed out the slot for the handle mount here and the door, this handle, you know, it made it fit and worked out perfect. Uh, still got to get this backside done, but it's ready to get put together. Had the missus pick up some new clips here. These clips just got a couple new ones 
this, this, these back doors should go together really, really quick. Um, oh, here's that stuff right here. It's supposed to be half inch thick and uh, it's like this foam, almost, well, it is a foam obviously, but like a closed cell, kind of rubbery feeling, not like a, a regular foam, like a couch foam. It's more of a rubber foam. I got the rust wire wheeled up here, wire wheeled, and then I just put some uh, self etching primer over top of it and kind of hit, hit that seam as well. Not that it was bad, I just want to protect it. And I'll do the same thing up in that crevice right there. I'll, I'll stick the hose from the, uh, um, the spray gun, this right here. This is a Woolwax Pro Undercoating Kit. Just got it in the mail. And it uh, comes with this nice long wand here. And it does a really good job. And uh, apparently it's about as good as it gets. You can pay more, but it doesn't really get any better. So we finished up all the door panels and door uh, window seals and uh, so far I'm really happy with everything looking really good it all works great and uh, the panels I put new screws in them for the wooden panels and then I put all new clips in the actual door panels and everything is nice and tight solid most of my carpets back in position now headliner was a real bugger to get back in place still have a couple little loose spots actually that one's not loose it's just folded but there are a few wrinkly spots but overall it's back in place and uh, should be holding just fine for the foreseeable future i was able to get the insides of these b pillars and a pillars and above the trim here all of that i was able to hit it with some of that uh, surface or was that surface shield yeah surface shield and i also got in these corners here the bottoms of the b pillars sprayed back and forth up and down as much as i could all right well the whole inside of the cab is done I think it turned out really nice. Now these new door seals, they're uh, causing a tight fit right now. I'm hoping that they'll wear in over a while. Won't even really shut. You gotta slam it. It's not because of that. It's right in here. This seal is catching the inside. Just really snug fit. I'm half tempted to move that latch or the catch back a little bit just to force it in all the way because I really don't like the way that looks. Uh, anyway, the inside I think turned out really, really nice. These floor mats, man, I'll tell you what, 60 bucks for the pair. I don't like the plastic they're made of. It's a pretty uh, stiff, hard plastic. It's not rubbery like I was expecting, uh, but the form and the shape and the fitment is fantastic on both sides. It's really happy about that. Um, let's see the headliner. I think overall turned out really nice. All the trim is back in the door panels, all of it really nice. And this thing's got this, I'm guessing this is a lumbar pump for the back seat here. Pretty neat. I didn't find that until I was vacuuming out. I'm going to leave the back torn apart for now because, uh, next part of this project is going to be to pull this topper. That's not happening today though. Yeah, everything went in nice. Really, really nice. Full vacuum. And finally, our front here. I'll stay open. Come on. I'm betting this used to be a Centurion sticker as well. So all these new seals all the way around and the door seals, or I guess these are called the runners and the sweeps. And uh, they all fit in really, really nice. All right, well, that's a wrap for this portion of the project. I'm gonna take a few days to get the barn cleaned up, go through my auction uh, buys uh, last weekend, get organized again, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start on this topper. I still gotta do the front tie rod, the right outer tie rod. Uh, well, it's a long tie rod. Um, and then hopefully I'll start driving it. So stay tuned. If you got any questions about any part of this project or the vehicle itself, you know, throw it in the comments section. I get back to everybody. Keep pulling on, on bootstraps. We'll catch you on the next video.